What's up guys, welcome back to wall.com. My name is Jeff Ray, featured guest host, and on today's episode, I'm gonna be taking you through some of the things you'll need to know when TIG welding titanium. We'll be going through your safety, your equipment, your machine setup, the materials used, and special components needed when TIG welding titanium. So let's get at it. So today, we're gonna to be making a titanium weld on this four inch tubing we have here. I wanna elaborate on the safety of when working with titanium. Obviously, safety glasses, gloves, and long sleeves, always when welding, cutting, and grinding. So when you're welding the titanium, it's not flammable. But cutting it, drilling it, grinding it, all that dust, the chippings from the saw, all that stuff is very flammable. I cannot exaggerate that enough. So if you could always clean up when you're done cutting and grinding and get that out of the shop area, we don't want any accidents. So safety always being the first thing. Now we'll go through the machine settings and what else we need when setting up to weld titanium. So I'm gonna take you through how we have the argon set up for this. Titanium utilizes a lot of shielding when welding, especially if we're welding tubing, you gotta purge the oxygen out as well. So we have a Smith dual regulator on here. Some people don't have dual regulators, you can use a Y2, that's fine. Just splits off of there with a single regulator. Also, they'll use purge chambers as well, which encapsulates the entire piece you stick your hands in and it's a total inert area to weld the titanium, as well as our uh, TIG torch here. So you're gonna need a large volume of gas that's gonna shield the, the material when it's hot. It does not like oxygen at all. So you can use big ferret cups like this. There's other brands out there as well. And there's companies that make trail cups, so you don't have to pause and go so much. We'll get through some of that in detail when we get in the welding part. Now. We'll go ahead and get our machine turned on. Titanium will weld on DC. We got it set here already on DC. We're gonna be utilizing a foot pedal with a high freak TIG start. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything, get geared up and go through the tacking process of this stuff. So let's get at it. We got the gas on, we got our machine set, got our tungsten sharp, and we got our big cup here. Now, before we go just burning tacks into this thing, you need to be aware when tacking, especially a material this thin, that it needs to be shielded on the backside. So if you don't have it under a purge at first, and you do tack this, say, fitment on the car, and it's hard to put a purge on it, just put two or three light tacks on there, and then put the piece under purge and really burn in those tacks because you don't want this thing to break tacks when you go to start welding it. And you want good tacks, so put it under a purge to ensure there's no oxidation in, in those tacks. Now I'm gonna go through setting up a purge on this stuff and why and how. You see I have the argon coming into this side of the tube and then on the other side I have it capped off. But I have a high point vent here. So essentially what we're trying to do is to evacuate all oxygen out of the tubing here. You're gonna need to evacuate the oxygen at the highest point because argon is heavier than oxygen. So it's gonna fill up from the bottom and it's gonna push that oxygen out the top. I have heat tape on here. I can weld ferrules and stuff in close proximity to this stuff and it doesn't burn off. Works really well. They also make aluminum end caps. They make silicone caps. There's all kinds of different ways you can purge it. Tape, painter's tape, whatever you may have. Now I got this thing on a purge. I'm gonna go ahead and burn some heavier tacks into it and then I'm gonna go through the weld process and what I'm looking for when welding the titanium to do this stuff right. So we've had the piece on purge for a number of minutes now. If you wanna know exactly how much time it takes to evacuate all the oxygen out of the pipe, there's a chart online for that. But I know at 25 CFH on a four inch piece of tubing, it takes one minute to evacuate all the oxygen out of the tubing. It's been a few minutes now, so I'm gonna go ahead and burn some heavier tacks in here. 
We'll get to welding this thing out. So I noticed that my post flow was not long enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that up. This stuff requires a lot of shielding gas. You're gonna hear me state this a lot. Shield this stuff a lot, so we need to crank that post flow up. So I just made three welds on how not to weld the titanium. The first one is going good, good pace there, a lot of silver, but you've seen I pulled away from the weld too soon when I stopped. You need to allow that post flow to shield that spot. You want the whole thing silver. Any color in this, that's oxidation that we don't want. The second one here, my pace was too fast, so I have the color all through the weld. It looks cool and all, but it's not practical for how this stuff should be welded. On the third one here, my gas was too low. Even the slightest bit of wind comes through the shop and blows the argon out, and now this piece, to me, essentially is ruined. Like, you'll never get this imperfection out of it. So now, we'll get the gas cranked back up, and I'll show you exactly how we need to do this and pace ourselves when welding it. So right now, I'm gonna weld stop and go every half inch to three quarters of an inch. Stay sitting there, let that post flow shield it. Let the weld cool. We can't move outside of the heat affected zone until it's cooled enough with the argon because you'll get that color in there. So I'm just gonna take a couple of dabs. I'll slow down, shield, and continue on again. This is one way you can do this. If you really wanna try to keep the coloration down, you can skip around and do a little bit at a time. That way it'll keep the heat down in one spot because the heat is what's gonna affect the color. And now I'm gonna show you with a continuous motion without using a trail cup. So this requires almost pedaling the heat because you gotta keep that heat down, but you wanna keep the lower heat affected zone within that shielding gas. So I'm gonna attempt to run about a two, three inch bead here and have the whole thing silver, which is what we want without using a trail cup. Now, when welding with filler metal on the titanium, you have to stick this filler wire directly in that puddle. If I touch the tubing at all with it, the filler wire will actually get stuck to it and it'll hang up and you gotta try to pull it out of there or move your arc over there to burn it off. Just keep that in mind when welding this stuff. The filler wire can get sticky. This is without any backing gas. I wanna show you in comparison to how it should look on the inside when properly purged. It also makes it harder to weld when you don't have that gas on the backside. The puddle control is totally different. The weld profile looks totally different. We got the weld made. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the purge off of it and we're gonna evaluate this thing inside and out to show you the differences on how this stuff needs to be welded. Essentially, on the first one, I pulled out too early or not enough post flow, as I would say. The second one, my pace was too fast and that's why we have all the color in there. We wanna slow it down and, uh, or make shorter beads. The third one, not enough shielding gas there. Need to bump up the shielding gas because this stuff likes to be shielded. In order to weld it correctly, you want it as silver as possible. This one here would be a stop and go motion. And what I mean by stopping and going is that when I'm welding it, I'm trying to keep the heat affected zone within the inside of the cup diameter here. 
So from the center of the tungsten to the outside of it, that's all that's going to shield. So I can essentially only move half the distance of the cup at a time and give it time to post flow, let the material cool, and then I start the arc again and move on. This one was a continuous motion, so I stayed at one speed, one heat, and uh, just kind of took it slow, but you can't put too much heat to it. If you'll see on the next one, I tried to do the same thing, but the piece was too warm, and that's why I have more coloration in the weld there. On this last one here, you can see the weld profile looks different and everything too. This one comes with a lack of backing gas when purging this. So the weld pull acted totally different as well as the weld lays totally different. You can see the profile of the weld sticks up and everything. So I want this stuff as flush as I can get it uh, and as silver as I can get it. And that's how you should properly weld titanium. All right, we're gonna take a look at the inside now. You can see we got a nice silver on the inside. That's exactly what we want. That means we purge the piece out long enough. We have a full penetration. We get over to this spot over here. This is where the lack of backing gas comes in. If you can see, it's a white, cloudy, almost green. It's very tarnished. You do not want this. This diminishes the weld quality, absolutely. And that's why we want to shield this stuff of all oxygen as possible. To get the strongest weld out of titanium, it wants to be shielded. So the more silver it is, that's the less oxidation we have within the weld. So that's what we don't want. You see the rest of the weld, very beautiful silver all the way through. You see a little bit of gold and purple in there. That's, it just wasn't quite purged out all the way yet. And then there's that bad spot where we lacked of the shielding gas on the outside. Some of the things to look for when purging titanium and welding titanium inside and out. So today, we made a weld on a piece of four inch CP2 titanium. I went through some of the safety features of what you need to look out for when handling this material and cutting and grinding, as well as we went over our gas coverages, our machine settings, and some of the specialty tools needed when welding titanium. We also went through some of the ins and outs of what to do and what not to do when welding titanium. If there's anything else you guys would like to know or see us do with titanium, leave a comment below. You can also head over to weld.com to the member section where you can get connected with us directly as well as head over to the members forum where you can ask questions and our advisors would gladly help you. So thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you later.